So today I'll be reviewing Pokemon Journeys episode 133 and 134. These episodes cover the Project Mew finale in its entirety, so I'll summarize each episode individually, then give you my overall thoughts on Project Mew as a whole. So episode 133 is titled Project Mew, and in this episode we got the start of Project Mew going all the others while Ash was competing in the World Championship Finals. This was mostly a setup episode that started off with all of the chasers meeting and making their way to Faraway Island so that they could search Table Mountain for Mew. And once they arrived at the island, they began their search using a sensor that Go created which I thought was pretty cool. Since early on in the series we learned that Go was pretty good with technology and research so I'm glad to see that they brung it back here. I also like how the sensor looked like a Game Boy Advanced and was glowing green on the top which was likely a reference to Pokemon Emerald which is the only game with Faraway Island. So after that we learn a couple of things about Asahi and Surugi, like how she specializes in molecular biology and geology while Surugi specializes in mountain ranges and the ecosystems of Pokemon and uses that in his. We also learned that attempting the impossible is what he lives for which I thought was interesting since when Gary asks if he'd catch Mew he doesn't say anything which to me means yes. So then Go and Tokyo talk about if they would catch Mew if they saw it and Go says that he would catch it if he had the chance which makes sense considering his current and original goal. So after walking for a bit a Swampert attacks them so Tokyo sends out a Verizion that he caught during his last mission which I thought was a pretty cool surprise since it means that every chaser has a legendary Pokemon which also makes you wonder what Hidoka's other Pokemon Pokemon is considering he's their leader. Moving on though, after traveling for a bit they end up at the base of the mountain said to be the center of the world and all of their devices stop working including their Pokeballs so they're unable to make any contact with Hadoka or use any of their Pokemon aside from the ones that are already out but despite this they decide to venture on anyway and climb the mountain before eventually ending up separated into two groups, one with Gary and Tsurugi while the other has Go, Tokyo and Asahi. So as both groups travel the island and battle different Pokemon, they slowly begin to put the pieces together that will lead them to Mew, but that's when Gary and Tsurugi meet Groudon and Go's group meet Kyogre, leaving us with a cliffhanger to end the episode. To briefly give you my thoughts on this episode, I thought it was good, it was a great setup episode with us learning about the lore of the island and Mew, as well as Asahi and Tsurugi and what their roles are. I also thought it was cool seeing Tokyo with the Verizion, since it somewhat confirms that you need a legendary Pokemon to be a chaser, which makes it that much more of an accomplishment and a well earned title. Aside from that we didn't get much else in this episode so I give it an 8 out of 10. Now let's talk about the latest episode before I give you my thoughts on Project Mew as a whole. So episode 134 is titled Taking the Future in Hand. This was the conclusion to the Project Mew finale with Go finally meeting Mew. So the episode picks up where the last one ended with both groups battling Kyogre and Groudon in a weird face off with Gary throwing some holy Arceus water to stop Groudon. Meanwhile Go and Tokyo try smoke signals to stop Kyogre but that obviously doesn't work. Luckily Grookey was finally able to do something since it learned Wood Hammer and stopped Kyogre. If you haven't seen the episode, I promise you I'm not joking, Grookey stopped Kyogre with a single wood hammer. I don't know if it's like the son of Leon's Rillaboom or what, but this actually happened. So after that, both Pokemon flee and they chase after them before eventually meeting up to watch the two of them clash. But when they do, Kyogre and Groudon end up combining into one Mew, confusing everyone. Then we get Mew's full appearance and it shows Go what seems to be the origin of the world through a dream sequence that features Rayquaza before eventually taking him to Faraway Island and waking everyone up. Afterwards, the rocks on the island stop glowing and communication resumes, giving everyone power back. But that's when the Pokemon on the island start rampaging while Mew starts having fun attacking everyone. So this leads to everyone teaming up to battle Mew with all of their Pokemon. And it goes how you would expect it to when a child is facing their parent. The parent in this case being Mew absolutely dominated like it was nothing with a smile on. Mew had absolutely no problem taking down all of their Pokemon even when they attacked in unison with legendary Pokemon. All of Mew's attacks were greater in scale and completely outclassed all of the other Pokemon combined. Mew was even willing to attack attack Go after ignoring his flashback speech up until the moment where Go tells Mew thank you for letting them meet again which leads to Mew restoring all of the Pokemon before transferring all of them off Table Mountain. Afterwards Go thanks Mew and promises to come see it again while saying that the future lies in his hands as he holds on to Mew for the last time. Later on they discuss what they saw with Professor Hodoka who tells them that the research ends here since the rainy season has begun and afterwards they disband the chasers but Gary, Go, and Tokyo are told that they 
they can stay if they want like Tsurugi and Asahi, but the three of them haven't decided what they want to do yet so they decline for now. After that, Gary gives his regards to Ash and Go says that he was glad to meet him before the three of them all depart saying that the future lies in their hands. And with that, the arc concludes and the episode ends with Go talking to Ash about his world championship battle. So to give you my honest thoughts on this episode and the conclusion of the arc, I honestly wasn't feeling it. We got the most cliche ending ever, but not in a good way. This feels more like the story was incomplete on top of having a lackluster ending. When it comes to this episode in particular, the only parts I really enjoyed were the meeting with Mew, with it showing everyone the origins of the world, since that implies that Mew has seen everything from before there was a start, meaning it may have been around for as long as the creation trio, since the only other Pokemon who should have been able to see that are the creation trio along with Arceus, which would be a massive revelation. I also like seeing Mew absolutely dominate all of their Pokemon unlike anything we've ever seen, Mew too is a clone of Mew so it only makes sense that Mew was this strong as well. When it comes to Go not being able to catch Mew, I'm pretty sure we all saw that coming from the start of the series. Seeing Go catch legendary Pokemon throughout the series did have me wonder if it was possible, but I never expected him to catch Mew because of everything surrounding its lore and history. My main problem was how cut and dry the ending was. If this wasn't his main arc, this would have been fine, but this is literally his series finale for Gen 8 after 134 episodes. Although Go re-encountering Mew was great and a series highlight, he doesn't have any tangible proof that he accomplished something. And now that he's already met Mew, what's his goal going to be now? I'm sure we'll find out in the next episode, but I feel like this finale fell short of expectations, especially when compared to Ash's, so I'm giving this episode a 6 out of 10. Making this two-part finale a 7 out of 10 at best, which may honestly be pushing it. But with that said, be sure to give me your thoughts on Project Mew as a whole in the comment section below, as well as these last two episodes. Thanks again for watching, and bye.